I'm Chifa and welcome to another episode of the Kikazim Experience. So on today's episode, we had two epic cakes. Yep. So we had a mammoth um, reproduction of a statue um, for Apostle Emeritus Kojo Safo Kantanka's 73rd birthday and the 50th anniversary of the Crystal Asafo mission in Ghana. Now, they booked me for the event last year after i did um the, his 72nd cake they booked me for this year's event and so um they had this grand idea of me reproducing a fountain that was at the crystal asafo mission um on the cape coast elmina road um i was so excited but scared um, because it's a huge endeavor. So essentially what it is is the map of Ghana and then within it is a pool and then within the pool is um, a monument of Africa with a globe in the middle um, with photos um, of the star of Africa. Um, which is what um, a lot of people know Apostle Emeritus Kojo Safo by as the star of Africa. And so it was a huge challenge. But one of the things I really appreciate about um, the Crystal Asafo mission and the Kantanka brand is how innovative they are. I mean, I think they are arguably the most innovative um, company in Ghana at the moment, like the kind of things that they are able to create. It's just mind blowing that we here in Africa can create the sorts of things that they do. And I think it's super commendable. And so to be able to um, work with such a brand is such a great honor and a pleasure for me. And anytime they call me up to do a cake for them, I always know it's going to be something that is going to challenge me and to push me. And I love that because you only get better when you challenge yourself. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that is the philosophy I have with work. We always push ourselves to be able to be better and to do better and to do more. And so when we have clients who allow us to you know, be able to innovate, it makes us better. And it lets people know that here in Ghana, we are able to do cakes that are comparable to um, the type of experiential cakes that um, happen in the States, in England, in the Far East, in the Middle East. We're able to produce those sorts of cakes here. And for me, that is the next step. So for um, the cake that we were going to do, I wanted it to be an experience. And so from the very beginning, my goal was to create an experience for everybody there, um, an experience of sight and sound and taste, obviously, because it's cake. So apart from the fact that the cake had to be really delicious, we wanted a cake that visually was stimulating and that had audio. Um, it was actually one of the first, it was actually the first time that we've had audiovisual mapping on a cake. Um, and so the first step was to put together my technical team. And I had Nana Kwame um, from Gig Kit and Kwesi from Mad Mappers GH, um, who helped me to bring this crazy vision um, to life. So we thought about what we wanted to achieve. And because of the scale of the cake, um, we, had, we knew that whatever we had to do, because of the size of the cake, uh, doing a cake that descended or ascended was out of the question because the cake was going to be ridiculously heavy. 
So the only thing that, that uh, the only other option we had was to make a cake that was motorable or movable um, in one way or the other. And so we decided to build a structure, a temporary structure of sorts for the cake to be housed in. And that, to be honest with you, was a brilliant idea, if I say so myself, because that day it rained like it rained from morning to the evening when the event was taking place like throughout like it was raining like and it was an amazing thing because if we didn't have that house for the cake it would have been an absolute disaster like a disaster so we had this um gig kids built us a house a fully air-conditioned temporal structure. We had two three-horsepower air conditioners in there, and it was cold. Because of the cake, we needed to have it really cold. And then we also built, um, we had to, we built uh, motorable doors that slided open via remote control for the, for the cake to make an entrance. So we decided to mo make the cake... Um, to build the cake on a, a wheelable platform. So the platform had wheels underneath it so we could push the cake out. Now, because the, the statue had um, a puddle or a pool in it, that was added weight. And the whole Ghana was cake and then the stars were cake. So the cake was very, very heavy. And so... We decided to put six wheels under so that the weight will be evenly distributed and it will be easier for us to push. Now, one thing we didn't realize at the time was that the whole venue was going to be carpeted. And now the amount of friction between the tire and the carpet was so high that it made the, the, the tire m moving down the moving on the carpet really really difficult because the tie kept getting caught in the edge of the carpet so when like the, the gates opened and the cake was supposed to come out there's a part in the video where you see that like we're literally trying to like push the cake out because it was actually stuck in the one of the wheels got stuck at the edge of the carpet and so we had to lift the platform with the cake and everything and literally pull out the carpet. Like it was just such like a nail biting moment because this is, a, this is not just a cake that is there. It's a cake with a pool in the middle with a map of Africa that is, is sitting on like its tip and everything had to be like extremely precise because the cake was going to move out to a particular position, stop, and then we're going to map onto the surface of the cake. And so there were so many parts to it. And so we had to figure out where we wanted the cake to stop once it got to that point. The projectors had to be positioned in such a way that they would cover the surface area exactly where we needed them to be and it was just a lot and like there were a few times during the whole thing that i asked myself why i put myself through this because i i don't even understand myself see a cake can just be simple sitting on a table but no i want to create an experience and these things are so challenging. Like, the, the, one of the biggest challenges that I faced during this whole thing was to create the structure for the cake. Because the thing is, it has to be cake. Apart from the fact that it's an experience, at the end of the day, people actually want to eat cake. With all the gimmicky stuff that we do, the bottom line is it's still cake. And so it has to be cut and it has to be eaten. And so to be able to have a cake that is able to do all those things and still be able to be eaten is the biggest challenge of all. So 
Initially, I planned out everything and decided that I was going to use stainless steel, which is a food safe metal, which is bendable. So I had this brilliant idea. I sat down with a welder. Art and print did, um, printed out the map of Ghana for me to scale. So I sat down with my welder and I said to him, I need you to cut out a metal sheet, a stainless metal sheet to this shape. And then we can bank it in the middle so that we can fit the pool in. And because it's stainless steel, all we had to do was to put silicone around the edges so that the water would not escape. And then we could actually even use a silicone-based paint to paint the hole inside to waterproof it. And then the pool would be inside, the cake would be outside, and there'll be no problems. Now that was the plan on paper. But these things never work out. Like, I've done this thing long enough to know that any time we, we try, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And so we have to have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, and all the rest of the alphabet because there's always going to be a problem. And as the problem occurs, you have to have a solution that is already marking time for you to implement. So, suffice it to say, the world that messed up. The money we used for that was ashe. The money was gone. And this was at, this was Thursday evening around 10 p.m. Now, mind you, the event was on Saturday. If on Thursday evening at 10 p.m., I do not have the structure that this five foot by four foot cake is going to be in. There was not going to be a cake on Saturday. And so then I decided to build my own whatever with wood. Yeah, wood. I decided to build this out of wood. So literally I got my carpenter. We, we had some wood. In the, in the back, fortunately, we're able to trace it. I, I, and you'll see in the video, I literally cut the wood myself because I was just so like frustrated at that point. My nervous energy was just like, let's just get this done. Like, because I was tired of hitting roadblocks. And for me, I'm the sort of person who like, I just like to get things done. I don't want excuses. I just want to get the thing done. I don't care what I have to do. I just want the job to be done. Or I want to, to, be, like, to be doing something that is going towards making the thing work. I cannot sit idling like when we have a problem. Like I'm always trying to find a solution. And so in that process, I decided to cut the thing out of wood. And because of the weight, I decided to cut out the middle. Wood is porous because of the fiber. And just how wood is, wood is not meant to hold water. And so that was the first issue. But then it, I was at the point where that was my plan B and C and D because um, the weather had messed up. I couldn't now go to timber market on Friday, when the event was Saturday, to now get another a stainless steel sheet. Meanwhile, that money has gone. And so I had to work with what I had available at the studio. So what I had was SAV, one eighth, uh, one eighth of an inch plywood. I had three quarter inch plywood. I had quarter plywood, a quarter inch plywood. And literally, that's what I used to build. So I decided to cut strips of one eighth plywood. And so there all these all this I'm talking about is in the video. So I decided to cut it, glue it together, sandpaper it. Then we use SAV um, to line the inside and we use aluminium tape to line the outside where the cake was going to be. So as at Friday at 6 p.m., everything was ready. And we started assembling the cake. So we started assembling the cake 24 hours before the event, which was ridiculous. 
So 24 hours before we assemble the cake, and mind you, the cake filled this whole. We actually had to expand our cake table, and we ha had this marine, marine. Uh, well, I think it's a chipboard. That's what it's called. We had this chipboard that's um. I think five feet by six feet or seven. Five feet by seven feet. We had to extend our table to be able to carry the size of the cake. Um, so we put the air condition on like the cool, coldest setting it could be. And then we worked on garnishing the cake. So after we, because we had baked the cake in advance, we baked about 100 loaves of cake that were 6 inches by 12 inches. So like building blocks. We had our chocolate ganache and our buttercream already. Like, I was set because I had, I had a plan. I knew what I was going to do. I knew what I had to do to achieve my goal. But then things happened. So literally, the only thing that we needed to do was to have the structure in place for us to fill with cake. So in about, we started, I think, around 6, 7 p.m. on Friday night. And we were done by... Um, 2 a.m. We had finished ganashing the cake and everything. Then I, dis I realized that the cake was too big to go through the doors of my studio. That was one thing I did not anticipate. In the calculation of the size and everything, I did not think about how I was going to get the cake out of the studio. So... <laughs> I decided that since we had this air-conditioned room, we we're going to um, finish the cake on location. So we're going to apply the fondant to the cake at the location. So that was around 2 a.m. when we had finished ganashing the cake. And I asked my team to go home to have a few hours rest. And to get in by six the following morning. And mind you, we had two cakes, two other cakes. So we had a five tier cake for Nana Kojo, um, the celebrant's grandson, who also happens to share the same birthday as his grandpa. So we had a five tier cake for him, aside that we're also working on at the same time as this Africa cake. And then I had another wedding cake, that's a three-tier wedding cake that I was doing that day too for a very special bride, Emanuela, who um, booked me for her wedding. So <laughs> literally that morning, I just woke up, I prayed to God for strength. And the conclusion of the matter is that God glorified himself because we did it. We des I decided at the last minute to cover the cake here, which I think was a brilliant decision because when we got there, like the humidity and it was raining and like it was just all over the place. And so we're able to get the cake in. But then one of the things that I didn't, well, I anticipated, but while we were carrying the cake, because it was wood, the, the, obviously the structure was wood, and we're about eight people carrying the cake. The weight wasn't balanced, so the wood cracked. And so when we went to pour water in the pool part, because of the shift and the crack, the silicone had gaped. And so the water was seeping through. But fortunately, because of how we did it, the water didn't seep through to the cake. It seeped through to the base of the board. So that was the saving grace. But everything worked out well. Our client was happy which is what we live for i mean at the end of the day the sleepless nights and everything when the client is happy and like they have had this wonderful experience we know that we've done our jobs and everything has worked out so i hope you enjoyed today's episode of the cakeasm experience so until next time remember to stay safe and mask up till next time bye <laughs>
Smashy to 700 CDs, plus the extra one that is set to buy 300,000 Smashy.